Hi folks, Harry Frank from Red Giant here, and in this tutorial, I'd like to show you the new features found in Trap Code Form 3. The very first thing you're going to notice when you try to apply Form is that it's located in a slightly different directory in your FX. You'll find it under RG Trap Code, and inside there, you'll locate Form. The first new feature I'd like to show you is the Designer window, and I'm going to launch that by clicking on this bright blue button here at the top. The designer window is an interactive environment where you can see your visual settings render and playback in real time, as well as a visual readout of what your settings are represented in these blocks down at the bottom. Any one of these blocks that I select will instantly show the related parameters over here on the right. If I double click on any of these blocks, I can load presets. So if I double click on the base form, I can load a base form preset. If I double click on the color section, a preset color map. I'm going to raise up the particle size to make this a little easier to see. If I double click on the fractal field, I can see any number of presets that affect the fractal field. Now that's one way to build. Let me click reset down here at the bottom. You can also start with a preset over here on the left, and that's what I'm going to do right now. So if I mouse over the word presets and scroll down, we'll see a number of different presets in different categories. I'm going to load this one here called mapped strings. So this is a good illustration of seeing our settings playback in real time. And then down here we can see a representation of all of our settings in these blocks. So as you can see, we have different blocks divided into categories, and each of those categories correspond to categories right back in your form effects controls. So we have a base form section, a particle section, shading, etc. So at a glance, we can see here that we've changed the base form to a box strings. We've got a little bit of a size map that trails off on the right side on our particles, and we can actually see that going on in there. We can see that we've got sort of an orange to teal color map and that we are affecting the fractal field. Equally as helpful, we can see what isn't on. So we can see that we don't have any disperse or twist, any shadowlets are on. We are not using any glide of space or a spherical field or a world transformation. So seeing what is not turned on can be just as useful as seeing what has been changed. So the way you design within this designer window is really going to be up to you. You can simply select any of these and immediately start making changes. As you go through and make changes, you can at any time save your preset back to the preset library simply by clicking on the save button down here. Or if you make changes to individual blocks and you'd like to retrieve those at a later date, you can simply right click on it and select save block. Or with the block selected, you can go up here and click on the save block icon here. Now one really cool thing you're going to find in the fractal field section as well as disperse and twist and spherical field is that the thumbnails will dynamically update showing you exactly what's going on. So in the case of a spherical field, if I turn up the radius and strength of the spherical field, we'll see that it will update the icon to show us what's going on. Let me hit reset there. The same would go for twist. If I add a twist, you'll see that the icon itself is going to distort depending on the settings that I've defined. As I turn other things on like shadowlets, the icons will change and it will show that I have now activated shadowlets or perhaps collide a space which mirrors the particles in 3D space. Those are less interactive and just show you an indicator that they are on and not using the default off state. So let's reset that and reset that. As you watch your design play back, you can use a camera tool to orbit around your settings, which is really cool. This works much like the After Effects camera, where you can not only orbit, but if I tap C, we can get an XY pan. And if I tap C again, we've got a dolly in and out. I can always reset my camera simply by clicking on the reset button to the left of the camera. Now let's talk about some other changes that have been implemented to Trap Code Form. If I go to the base form, we can see that we've got a number of presets in here, and one of these is OBJ model. This is nothing new. We've had OBJ models in previous versions of Trapcode Form, but there are some really cool additions here. Now, first of all, we are able to load these right here in the designer. So instead of using that block, I could also just go up here and select OBJ model as the base form type. And this will allow me to click on choose OBJ and pull up the massive new OBJ library that ships with Trapcode Form. 
Now, a limitation that we had with trap code form before was that the particles would only render on the vertices of the object. Sometimes you ended up with very sparsely rendered objects because there just weren't many vertices. So now we've got the ability to render on the edges of the object. Let me turn up the size of this object. We can also render along the faces of the object as well as the inside volume of the object. So like I mentioned, you can load the OBJ right here by browsing the library. As you load these, you can always save them as a preset block and then retrieve the OBJs instantly later on. But we've also done that for you already. So we've gone through and saved the OBJs here so you can instantly retrieve the OBJs that are included with trap code form. As you watch this playback, you can see that the fractal is not applying on the left side nearly as much as it is on the right side. So the right side is actually very strong and the left side is actually turned off. So we have a sort of variable mapping of this fractal field from one side to the other. Now in the past, this was done in a section called the quick map section. The quick map section contained three different maps that you can map to parameters in space. So in form three, we've actually done away with the quick map section. Rather than having a dedicated section, we simply added all of those quick maps to each section where it was available. So in this case, I am applying fractal strength over the x-axis, and I am using a variable curve that looks like this. So over on the left side, there is very little fractal strength, and over on the right side, there is a maximum fractal strength. This is available for a number of different things, such as disperse. So I can go in, turn up the disperse to randomize the particles, and I can turn on the disperse strength and select that. Or in fact, I can copy and paste between curves. So I can copy this curve here, go over to disperse and paste it like so. You'll find this in particle size, opacity, and the color map is also mappable over X, Y, and Z, as well as radial in the case of layered spheres. But you'll find that the strength is actually not variable because it is a variable color map. Now let's reset this. And I'll go to my blocks here and we'll just load a simple 32 by 32 grid. Now one welcome thing you're gonna find is that by default, we've actually linked X, Y, and Z scale together. But if you don't want it like that, you can unlink them and scale X, Y, Z individually. Note that this also works with OBJ. So if I quickly load an OBJ here, you can freely distort OBJs in X, Y, and Z. This doesn't always work, but sometimes can be really cool in the case of things like this helix here. But let's go back to our box grid and I'll go to my fractal field. We'll have it affect the opacity and we'll have that opacity map flow along Y. So it's kind of cascading down. Let's reset our camera here too. So just going for a little bit of a grid where the particles flow downward. Now, as you might well know, form has the ability to use images as particle types. We call that a sprite in the case where it's a, an image always facing the camera and a textured polygon when it is a two-dimensional image that rotates in all three axes. So in this case, I'd like to load a sprite that is colorized. It's a sprite I'd like to be able to color map. So I'm gonna set that to Sprite Colorize, and I'm going to choose a sprite here. And you'll see that we've got a very large sprite library. This is actually shared with Trap Code Particular, so everything added to Trap Code Particular shows up here as well. So if I go in here, I go to chevron basic i can sort of have a cascading chevron background let's actually have these face the right way so i'll flip this rotate z so that they're going downward and adjust the size just a little bit so if i go to my color i can map this over y and let's just use one of the quick presets here now, so far in this tutorial, I've been spending a lot of time in the Trap Code Form Designer, but you don't always have to work in the designer. In fact, if you're very comfortable in form, 
you'll find the effects controls here, a very capable place of doing your editing. So if I want to change a sprite or add a sprite, I can go to the particle section, and as long as I have one of the sprite or textured polygon options selected, I can click on the Choose Sprite button, and this will load the same exact library that you have seen before. Along those same lines, if I want to change to an OBJ model, I can select OBJ model in the base form section, click on choose OBJ, and the same OBJ library loads that you've seen before. And now we'll see our sprites rendering along that OBJ model. Aside from that, you won't see sweeping changes here in the effects controls window right here in After Effects. As I mentioned, the quick map section is gone but we've added those strength curves everywhere that they were available. So you'll find them in Fractal Strength, Disperse and Twist, and you'll also find it on the Particle Size and Opacity, so you can control the strength over XYZ, as well as Radial in the case of Sphere Base Forms. You're also going to find curves in the Audio React section. So real quick, if I drop an audio track in here, define the audio layer to be my music track, and I'm going to map this to, let's say, particle size. And I really just want to queue up to a moment in time where things are being affected by the music. What the strength curve does is allow you to define an axis, so let's say X, Y, or Z. So in this case, I'll select X, and we'll control the particle size effect that the audio reactor is having on your image. So really, we've got two different layers of control here. We have the audio reactor looking at the music, controlling the particle size, and then we have the strength curve that is controlling the audio reactor. So a quick illustration of what this looks like is to simply draw some gaps in the chart here. And you can see that the particle size is now not being affected in those sections. Or you could just use a linear graph like that, or draw your own, or use the B-spline editor. That about covers it. Those are the new features found in Trap Code Forum 3. My name is Harry Frank for Red Giant. We'll see you soon.